Hey guys, welcome, welcome. My name is Stan, also known as Ron the Mighty, and today we're gonna be looking at these super cool explosions in Unreal Engine 4. It's mostly gonna be a shader tutorial. Maybe in the future we can do some sparks and lights and particles just to make it more sort of game ready. But for now, let's just stick to the shader. So before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to a project I recently released called Explosions for Games. It's basically a pack full of explosion animations. They come with some really nice render passes. They come with flip books. So pretty much all you need. And it's available right now. Uh, please check it out. I'm going to put the link in the description. Yeah. So let's get to it. Okay. Let's get started from scratch. So hide away these old explosions. I'm currently using this Paragon map because it's a real nice backdrop and it always helps to do your effects against, you know, a level of your game. It just gives you a sense of compositing and just what it looks like, what it feels like. Cool. Let's drop in our explosions from the pack. Um, they're currently EXR format, so you definitely want to tweak them once they get imported. Otherwise, by default, EXR comes in as HDR compression, which makes for massive memory. And, you know, we don't want that. Cool. I'm going to set it to default. I think for the smoke, we can probably take sRGB. Just keep it consistent. Same for the fire. Um, eh, maybe we can keep it linear, but it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, let's take sRGB. Cool. Um, motion vectors, you definitely want them to be linear. Uh, doesn't matter uh, too much the size. You could probably kind of take it down one map, maybe. Um, but you do want them to be linear. And finally, the normals. Um, yeah, just set them to normal map. And cool. We are ready to roll. So... Next thing we want, we want to make a new material. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call it M underscore explosion. And also, we want to make a material instance of it so that we can stick it on our particle. So, make a material instance. I'm going to call it, uh, yeah, let's leave it like that. Cool. Uh, so, in our material, we want to. Let's close these in our material. First of all, we want to set the blend mode. I like to use alpha composite. Uh, it's very nice if your source textures are sort of rendered against the black background. And for shading model, I'm going to go with subsurface so that we can get some sort of more options. And then for the lighting mode, I want to go with directional so that we get a slot for a normal map. Cool. And next we want to actually drop in our textures. So just like that. And texture samples. So we have a fire motion vector. We want our smoke and we want our normals. Very nice. Now normally there's a few different ways you want to set up your sub UV. In our case, we're going to do it all in the material. And I'm going to go into more detail later why we do it that way. But basically, instead of doing the sort of particle editor, so let's make a little particle first. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's call it uh, P explosion 01. Please. Thank you. Excellent. So in Cascade, you can actually set up your sub UV in here, which usually works great. However, later on in the project, we're going to be doing some cool stuff with motion vectors. So it's a bit more helpful to have everything in the material. In this case, uh, I'm going to use the sub UV function. So sub UV function. There you go. Now, the function wants a um, texture object rather than a texture sample. 
So we have to convert that. And for now, I'm just going to do the smoke just so we could see it in our preview and in the level. So I'm going to right click, convert the texture object and plug that into here. For our UVs, we want to use just a standard texture coordinate. So if you hold down U, you can make one. Then we want our sub images, which is so for our texture or flipbook rather. We've got 10 along the X and eight along the Y. So in the material, if I hold down two, it'll make a two constant and I uh, will put in 10 and 8. Cool. And then for the frame, we actually want to put in a dynamic parameter for our particle, which is actually going to drive the sort of curves and everything. So dynamic parameter. Basically, these are four parameters you can plug into your particles and control them over the lifetime. So I'm going to call the first parameter sub UV. And then I'm going to take the whole thing, plug that into base color, and plug the alpha into the opacity. Cool. So we can see our first frame of our explosion smoke. Uh, actually, I'm also going to plug in a zero into the subsurface color just for now, just so we can get the proper alpha. And there we go. Cool. So now with this ready to roll, let's go ahead and save it and put it onto our particle. So open up the particle and then in here we want, we want our material instance to go into the material. We want to spawn, I wouldn't say 20, we want to spawn one particle at every cycle. So make a burst out of one. Um, we don't really want velocity, so let's make the lifetime five seconds for now. So five seconds lifetime. Let's make the cycle five seconds. Cool. And also let's make it use local space so I could move it around easy. Cool. Maybe for size, I'm going to make it constant and just use like a default 500. Cool. So if I now drop in our particle into the level, you should, there you go, you should be able to see it. Very nice. Now we can actually see what we're doing. Cool. So the dynamic parameter that we earlier on set up in the material, we want to add that in now. If you go into parameter dynamic, there we go. And now this number here is going to be driving our animation, basically. So you can see as I ramp it up, it'll kind of change it, which is super handy for being able to control it over its lifetime. So in the case, we would want to go make it into a curve. So I will go add two elements on at the end of the lifetime. So value end of value is one. And then we want first frame to be zero last frame to be 79 because we have 80 frames and there we go we have ourselves a little animation cool and let's go ahead and add in the fire so in this case let's use our fire basically it will do the same as the smoke so copy this over Copy those over and let's get the same. Plug that. Oh, we want the texture object. Yep. So convert it to a texture object. And we want this one to actually go into our emissive. Cool. Yeah. That looks about right. Now, it looks very dim. So let's go ahead and make it a bit brighter and also a little bit smarter. 
So we have this set up here. Now, we want this value to be multiplied. If you hold down M and left click, you get a multiply. We want this value to be adjustable in our material instance. So I'm going to hold down S and make a scalar parameter. And then I'm going to call it fire underscore strength. I'm going to give it a group. I'll just call it. Let's make a group called basic properties. So these will be our sort of basic settings for the fire. And by default, I want the value to be one so that our fire does not disappear. Cool. Plop that in and save it. So now we can actually start messing around with this. If I go into the material instance and now start, there we go. We have our parameter and start to wrap that up. Hey, there we go. That's some bright fire. Now, for fire, a lot of the time, we don't really want to just make it emissive and leave it at that. Maybe the look works for you sometimes, but I like to actually run it through a proper black body node. This will give our fire a little bit more realistic colors, and it's essentially a very fancy gradient map that will take the values of our fire um, and then just remap it. So, in this case, if I plug that into the black body and then put it into the emissive, it will probably be very dim and very much invisible. Yeah, there you go, it's gone. Basically, the, back, the black body node wants values that are realistic to the black body scale, which means that our fire strength here now probably makes more sense to be called temperature. So in this case, if I ramp this up, you get to actually see the fire at a value that is more like temperature. Cool. So let's go ahead and call it what it is. Temperature. Also, I want to be able to change the contrast a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and make a power node. If you hold down E, it will make yourself a power node. And this will basically allow us to slightly tweak the amount of contrast we have. So I'm going to go ahead, plop that in, make another scalar, call it, I just like to call it either contrast or pow. Let's go and say pow fire. Put that into the basic properties. And by default, again, we want one so that our fire doesn't disappear. Cool. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and freeze the frame to something that I like. Let's turn that off. Maybe here. Oh. Let's keep it at 10. So on frame 10, this way I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Oh, that's very bright. But yeah, you can see how this value can end up changing the look quite significantly, even if it's like a small value change. So like, let's put it to 1.1, maybe 1.05. There you go. So you have a nice little fire. And then tweaking the temperature will give you a somewhat realistic result. So let's keep the temperature to 3,500. Sweet. Let's make our smoke a little bit darker. So in our base color, we want to, we probably want to control it based on the particle color. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and get a particle color node, and then I'm going to just multiply the two. So color, you can even do this neat little trick. If you hold down control and drag, you can move certain inputs. It saves you a lot of time. Cool. Now I can take the RGB 
and multiply it by the color that we plug into our particle. So in this case, it's default to one. Now I can make it quite a bit darker. Yeah, let's keep it kind of like this. Cool. Okay. We have our fire, we have our smoke. That looks pretty cool. But let's get a little bit more advanced. So motion vectors is a really cool technique that basically will give you in between frames for your flipbook. It will kind of future proof your flipbooks a little bit because you can change the lifetimes without struggling with any stutter stepping. So in our case, currently as we don't have it, if I go and have add in a half frame, you get this sort of obviously very blended and stutter steppy animation, which is not good enough. Maybe you can make your explosion have a really short lifetime in order to hide this fact, but ultimately the motion vectors will help you fix this. If I go into our previous um, explosions, which is basically a future version of our shader. Uh, where is it? There it is. Aha. Uh -huh. And go into the material. I can show you very quickly what I mean. So if I turn off this value, which is how blendy we want our frames to be, um, you get this kind of stuttering motion and if I slow it down even further using the custom dilation so let's say we go down to 0.1 you're going to see obvious stepping now if I go back to turn it on to what it was which is 0 0.35 suddenly we have this really nice smooth motion and basically that's what the motion vectors will do they'll give you optical flow which is, I believe, the actual terminology for it. The math for it is a little bit more in depth, and we are going to go through it right now. So, uh, buckle up. Now, let's jump back into our old explosion. So, close this up, hide this one, and there we go. Let's go into the material, and write. Basically, we want to take this function and make a version of it that will give us the UVs of our sub UV function. So if I go and dive into it, basically, rather than getting the RGB and alpha, we want to get basically this, which is all our cool maths that does the sub UV, then added onto a texture or a texture coordinate so to do that I am going to go into my content browser and then I'm gonna find where this function lives and just basically make a variant of it so sub UV function let's clone it another one and call it sub UV function let's call it UVs Cool. So I have it, and in here, we don't really need RGB, we don't really need alpha, so let's nuke those. Um, don't need this one, nuke that. Basically, we just want this input, which is the UVs. Cool. Save it. Uh, you could probably move it to a different place just to make sure that it's not in the engine files. I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. So let's actually drop it into our tutorial for folder. Move it. So, just want to drop it in, just like that. And basically, we want to plug in same values as before, except we're going to manually 
offset the UVs of our texture. So plug this in here, plug this in here, and then our frame, same as before. This time around, we want these UVs to go into our motion vector. And this is going to be our first frame, or rather our current frame of the motion vectors. I want to make another version, same as before. Take this, make another sub UV. And we want our current frame and then our next frame in order to do the blending. That way we have the information that we need to basically interpolate the data and bend the UVs in such a way that gives us that illusion of flow in motion. So make another clone and then for our next frame we want to take this and add one. So hold A, make an add and just plug that in. Cool. Now for this next part I'm going to try and explain it in an example. I've opened up the motion vector map in After Effects and in the low info box you get to see the pixel values. Red and green are at 0.5 or roughly 0.5. Basically any value that's above 0.5 or below 0.5 will bend the UVs in that direction. So in this case red is above 0.5 so it's going to push the pixels to the right and then green is under 0.5 so it's going to push the pixels upwards. And basically it's going to do that for every frame and we're going to have our UVs being basically manipulated based on this information. So to do it properly in Unreal you can take our RGB of our motion vectors. So let me move this backwards a little bit so we have some extra space. Right, so from our RGB we want to take the red and the green. So let's take the red and the green and do an append. So take these two. That means that we just make sure that we are using red and green and no blue. Cool. Next up, we want to multiply these values by two, which means if you go back to After Effects, we're going to be able to see the values that are basically above and below one. So in here, if I multiply, let's give it a two. There you go. And next we want to subtract one. That way we will isolate the values. So whoop, wrong one. Let's do a subtract. Yeah. So just like this. There you go. So you see red is going to be pushing left and right and then green is going to be pushing up and down. So we want to do the same for our next frame. Let me label these really quickly. So if I grab all these and do a comment, I'll put in current frame and let's clone this and next frame cool just so I can keep them separate actually I want this add in there as well cool move this Next up, we want to be able to get a fraction of our frames because a lot of times, basically, you want to blend the, f the frames where this value is sort of between the integers. So maybe if I put in 1.75, that's our example. So at 1.75, you get to see the frames are kind of blending together or trying to, and that's, you know, that's what gives us the stutter stepping motion. So in this case, 
I want to take this and run it through a frac node. So that will give us the fractional value of our input. So in this case, it'll give you this sort of pale gray, you know, bright gray 0.75 value. And we want this value for our current frame. We want to multiply it to the whole thing. And then we also want to add a scalar, which is usually, I think in this case, referred to as a magic number, because a lot of the time it is a little bit of guesswork that controls the strength of the UV manipulation. So have 0.75 and then we want to multiply this again by a scalar which I'm gonna call magic number. So put it let's make a new group and call it motion vector uh, magic number. Cool. So by default let's keep it as zero. Or actually, let's keep it to something. Usually, it'll be a value, a really low value, kind of like this. So now, maybe not so low, just so I can see it. There you go. You can very faintly see red and green channels in there. So that's how much we're bending the UVs. So if I pull this down. Then this. Now I want to get these UVs to subtract from this. So subtract, and that will be our current frame bendy UVs, basically. Yeah, it's very subtle, but you can kind of see it. So for the next frame, we want to do a similar trick, except this time around, we have the next frame. So with our current value of 1.75, we are we would be at 2.75, which is we want basically the reverse of that. So let's grab another fraction. And then this time around, we want one minus the fraction. So let's get one minus. This will give us basically two point or point two five as a result. Let's do the same as we had done before, which is multiply. this time and then multiply it by our magic number so let's take this cool and then for the next frame we actually want to add rather than subtract so let's do an add to our UVs from here. Let me make a little no, uh, reroute node just to keep it a little bit cleaner. So in here and then in here. All right, so let's open this up. Pull this out. Uh, oh, um, ah, I see. There's a little bit of a mistake. So make sure that the red and green is plugged in. Ah, there we go. So yeah, you want to be able to see the texture coordinates. Um, cool. So now we want to get a texture sample. So if you hold down T, it'll make one. And we want to get our smoke. So let's go ahead and copy over this texture object, plug it into the texture, and then distort the UVs of our current frame in here. 
There we go. So that's our current frame. I'm going to pull this out here. And same for the next frame. So make a texture sample, plug it into the texture, and then distort it. Right? So all that's left to do now is to lerp between the two values. So basically, on the current frame, we're pushing the pixels out. And on the next frame, we're bringing them back in. And that way, when we interpolate, we get the smooth sort of crisp, smooth motion. Right. And we want to lerp these by the fractional value. So we want all the in-between frames to be filled in. Cool. So now all that's left to do is test this out. I'm going to get rid of the fire for now just so we can double test this and I'm going to get rid of the opacity. So instead of our first smoke that we had here, I'm going to take this value, put it into the base color and put it into the opacity. Um, we'll change this in a bit and turn it all into a proper sort of function that looks nice and then we can copy it over for the other channels. But for now, let's double check it works. Save it and let's give it a shot. So there we go. Here's our semi translucent smoke and the moment of truth. Let's make it animate over its lifetime. Set this to constant curve again, make some new keyframes and we want on the last frame on the end of its life to be frame 79. Very nice. Oh, okay. So you could see it smooth already in here. So our smoke, uh, this is already set to point one. So I'm going to set this to one for now. And yeah, very smooth. So now let's do another test, set the custom dilation to point one. And there we go. So all these, I mean, it's not perfect all over the place, but if you look at it from a distance, you get to see all our frames be filled in. So now instead of the stepping, we get this smooth, crisp motion. Now that we've got our behavior that we want, Let's do a little bit of cleanup duty in our material just to sort of prevent any spaghetti going on. The way I like to turn things into a material function is I'll go ahead and make a new one right now. I'll call it motion vector blending and open it up. Go back to our material. I'm just going to copy the whole bit of material graph that we built up like so and just copy it in here. Basically anywhere where we have an input of a texture or a scale scalar number that we think it's going to change. Um, we want to turn that into an input, which is if you do an input function. So we want a scalar, which is going to be, I'll just go ahead and call it magic number. And I'm going to put in a constant for our preview, which is the same value as the one we already have. So 0 0.04. Cool. Then we want to plug that in. Also make sure it is set to a scalar because that's how it should be. Um, set this up in here. Then we want to set up an input function for our texture object, which is actually this normal map is shouldn't belong here. We want to set up an input for our sub UV. So input. Let's get another scalar. This one is called particle sub UV. Set it to scalar. And then I'll put in, I can probably leave it as a preview dynamic parameter. Actually, another cool thing you can do, if you hold down control, you can grab all of the inputs and move them to the next thing. 
I'll save, save you a lot of time. So, a sub UV, right? We want the texture sample to be the same. Oh, here we actually missed. We forgot a few bits. So we want to get our texture coordinate. And this one is most likely going to change. So we should turn that into a two vector. And let's go back in here. So texture coordinate should be the same. Sub images should be an input because not all flip books are, you know, made equal. So let's do an input. We need a vector two and in the preview, pop in our existing one. Cool. I'm going to call this one. We called it sub images which is how many frames our flipbook has. Plug that into here. Next, we want to get, make sure that this one is not always the same. So we want to get another, whoa, we want to get another texture object input. So one for our smoke, 2D texture, you can even add in a preview, um, let's add in texture object preview. Uh, let's leave it. Yeah, let's leave it as default. R1 is color, so it shouldn't be a problem. So in here, or actually maybe, let's do it this way. I'm going to get rid of that one and just use our smoke for now, just so we can see what's going on. So again, Hold control, move this here. And then one, so take this one for our motion vector map. So I'll call it, I'll call this one uh, diffuse. And I'll call this one motion vector. Very nice. So now I can take another texture object of our smoke just so we can retain the preview. I'll put in this one. Plug it in here. It knows it's a linear curl color, which is good. So put this into our texture. So let's see. Have all the bits. And then finally, we want to do this and output output RGB. Maybe we also want to output alpha. Yeah, let's do that. So make another lerp. Same as before, we take the top one, except this time we're taking the alpha channel. And then take the fraction and then our output this time around is output alpha. Cool. There we go. That means that both our alpha and our color channel are going to get motion vectored. So save it. And let's see what we get. If I take that and plug it into here, we have so particle sub UV, magic number, motion vector, diffuse. Um, yeah, that should be about right. So now let's rejig it a little bit. Take this bit of logic and start populating this one properly. So particle sub UV, then we want our sub images, which probably should be scalers. Uh, let's do it as two scalers. So I'm going to call this one sub UV sub UV U and let's put it at one and sub UV 
V. Let's put these into our motion vector group and append them to make a two vector. There we go. So there's our sub images. Next, we want to make this one into a parameter. So, uh, which one is? It should be texture object parameter. There we go. So that's that one we want to be our smoke. Ooh, there you go. Smoke and put it into basic properties. That one will go into diffuse and then motion vector. This one I'll call motion vector. Should I? Yeah, I'll put it into the motion vector group. And then we want a scalar for our magic number. Let's put it at the default value of 0 0.04 as it was. So now when we output this, let's do a quick check. If I multiply this by one, we should see, uh, actually, I guess in here. Let's put in the actual our actual textures just to be able to see it. So smoke and motion vector. So in our sub UV we want to put in so it was ten along the X and eight along the Y. There we go. Cool. So now we have the RGB and we have the alpha. Very nice. So if I put this, this is our smoke. Let's clean it up a little bit. Now we no longer need this bit of logic. Let me go ahead and delete this bit because we already have it as a function and it's nice and neat so I will comment and say this is our smoke cool so now we plug that into here which was our color multiplier put it into the base color then we get our alpha. Let's actually multiply the alpha by the alpha from our particle color. Put this into opacity and uh, there we go. Cool. Bring back the fire and yeah. Let's see if we made any mistakes. Hopefully not. Where is it? Aha. Uh -huh. So maybe we need to slightly tweak it. Actually, our fire doesn't have the motion vectors yet. But let me quickly check. Yeah, our smoke is blending nicely. So we basically have to do the same logic for the fire to make sure that it propagates correctly. In here, let's do another version of this. And we can actually piggyback off of all these parameters. So append sub images I believe this one can just be copied over so you don't get spaghetti so instead of smoke this time we're gonna do the fire let's take our fire and it will go into the diffuse this one can come from the motion vector let's call this one fire just to not get confused because immediately it 
override it. I'll override it here. Smoke, please. And then magic number, same. So now, in our RGB, wherever we did the fire, we can do it here instead. Oh, we had mistakenly plugged in the parameter in the wrong bit. Classic mistakes, but that's okay. So in our sub images, we want the vector two and in our particle sub UV, we want the scalar. There we go. So now if I save this again, our fire should be also blending. Let's see. There we go. Look at that. So smooth. I love it. And last but not least, we want to do the same thing for our normal map. Same again. We want to make a version of this. Copy it over. Let's go ahead and call this one. Comment it. Call it fire. To keep it looking good. And one more. We get a new texture object parameter. Call it normal. And plug it into the diffuse. Let's feed it the right texture. Go. Cool. So we want sub UV, we want sub images, we want the motion vector, and the magic number. Let's comment this in, call it normal. Come on. Eh. Normal. Very nice. So now all of our channels that we care for should be properly motion vectored. There we go. That looks normal mappy. Cool. Save it. And if I reset our particle in slow motion, we get a nice smooth silhouetted explosion. Very nice. So all that's left to do really is to make this a little bit more customizable. Maybe add some more parameters that we can tweak in the instance. Maybe we want to add some more contrasts or maybe pow for the smoke. Maybe for um subsurface do some cool stuff with that let's try it out in the material let's go ahead and in our diffuse or rather smoke let's do the same that we did for the fire so run it through a power node hold e do a power node let's take our base color and call it again, yeah, whatever you like. Pow, smoke. Put it into the basic properties. Now let us just control the contrast of our smoke. So maybe push the shadows a little bit, that kind of stuff. We can even do the same for the opacity so that we can control the transparent bits. Same again, move this here, do another scalar, maybe don't call it that, call it pow, opacity, and now should be able to tweak the look in our subsurface, maybe we want to just use the same value as the smoke, let's give that a try. Oh, that might give us, we might want to add another multiplier to the subsurface just so we can control it. So save it and moment of truth, 
we will be able to tweak our smoke to our heart's content. If it appears. Come on. Ah, there you go. So let me actually freeze it again in the particle so I can see what I'm doing. Let's freeze it on frame 20. 20. There you go. We have some fire. We have some smoke. Go. Cool. Go back to our material instance, which is here. And so, yeah, you can tweak the opacity. Maybe make your smoke a little bit thinner around the edges. This will basically change that or the other way around. Although you don't really want to push it because you're getting a bit of haloing. So maybe this way. Yeah. And then same for the smoke. Make it darker or lighter. So let's do... Yeah, something like this. Make the fire stand out. And then push the fire a little bit more. So now if I go and scrub through it. Yeah. Nice and bright. So that is just about it for this tutorial. If you've covered most of the basics, you can go ahead and probably expand on this material, do some cool stuff with near camera fading, far camera fading. You can do some cool stuff with the subsurface color. You can do some cool refraction tricks where it makes it seem like your fire is bending um, the air around the explosion, that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm going to leave it at here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you find it super useful. And please check out my Explosion for Games project. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.